Museveni Human Rights Record Backquote Disgusting, The Independent Uganda, by Ian Katasime, November 18, 2023 at 1.03 p.m. Feedly AI found three regulatory changes mentions in this article. View all. Norbert Mao speaking at the Human Rights Convention at Golf Course Hotel on November 15, photo Fiona Kobugabe, Justice Minister Mao leads outcry at Human Rights Convention. Cover story, Ian Katasime, a legislator lying frail on a hospital bed after a long detention. Up to 32 political prisoners charged in the general court martial. Thousands unaccounted for after abductions. A tough law against homosexuality. An American couple getting fined SHs 100 meters for torturing a child. The state of human rights in Uganda has never been uplifting but it appears to be sinking to a record low, according speakers at the Human Rights Convention held on November 15 in Kampala. Being the first convention since the COVID-19 outbreak in 2020 ensured there was a lot to talk about regarding human rights in Uganda. Speaker after speaker raised the same issues of torture, illegal detention and the cruelty of Uganda's criminal justice system. Norbert Mao, the Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs, who spoke at the event had some concessions to make. It's not my duty to come here and sanitize the human rights situation in Uganda. I am disgusted by it myself, he said and he was not done. I want to tell you there is no more image to protect. The government in terms of human rights is stark naked. Mao added that he would not be defending the government on any abuse it commits but those in the audience felt the minister he was speaking to himself. Mao has found himself at crossroads as, in his new job, he has to work with security agencies like the police and army who have routinely arrested and abducted persons for being members of the political opposition. The organizers of the Human Rights Convention, Chapter 4 Uganda, which is a human rights NGO, have themselves borne the brunt of repression from the state. Chapter 4 offices have routinely been raided, computers confiscated and staff arrested by security operatives and the office closed for months. What the state is doing to NGOs in Uganda is not good at all, said Anthony Masaki, the program's manager at Chapter 4. The criminal justice system has been misused and abused in Uganda, he added. The founder of Chapter 4, Nicholas Opio, has faced intimidation from the state himself and in 2020 was whisked away by security and later charged with money laundering for hundreds of thousands of dollars allegedly sent to Chapter 4 from abroad. The charges were later dropped but the run-ins Opio and Chapter 4 have had with the state capture the environment human rights NGOs operate in in Uganda. Chapter 4 hosted the Human Rights Convention conjunction with Konrad Adenauer Siftung, CAS, Uganda under the theme, Migration and the Quest for Peaceful and Inclusive Societies. Discussions at the convention focused on the state of laws, regulatory enforcement, civic space freedoms, access to justice and accountability. Former Kenya Attorney General Professor Githu Migai, who is a former judge of the African Court of Human and People's Rights, led the lawyer-packed panel of distinguished speakers. Also on the panel were lawyers Buzingye Kabumba, Executive Director of the Human Rights and Peace Center HURIPEC, a semi-autonomous department under the School of Law at Makerere University Kampala. Others were George Musasi who has represented 32 supporters of the opposition National Unity Platform, NUP facing charges before the Army Court Martial of illegal possession of explosives, Miriam Atemp. An outspoken advocate for constitutional and women's rights, Zahara Nampuo, human rights activist and board chairperson Chapter 4, Matthias Empuga, the leader of opposition in Parliament, Maria Alessi, a social justice activist, and David Empanga, a renowned advocate. George Musasi who has represented many political prisoners, not only those affiliated to the opposition NUP says the generally rollback of human rights in Uganda has happened swiftly. I think in the last two to four years there has been a degeneration of human rights in Uganda. We have seen an increase in torture, an increase in incommunicado killings, he told the Independent. The rights to freedom have been wiped away. There has been an attack on our rights by the police and security agencies, Musasi said. He says the worsening state of rights abuse is ironic due to passage of recent laws like the Prevention and Prohibition of Torture Act and the Human Rights Enforcement Act. He also expressed disappointment at institutions that would be advocating for rights like the Human Rights Commission in Uganda, UHRC. 
government which is the principal duty bearer in protecting rights has been a big letdown, Musasi said. Children of John Bosco Kibalama hold a portrait of their father who was disappeared by state agents on June 3, 2019, photo Bobi Wine. Headed by Mariam Wangadya, UHRC has descended into an anti-rights stance going by the statements of its leader. Wangadya wrote an op-ed in the New Vision in October calling for the depoliticization of human rights to the chagrin of activists and human rights defenders. As the discussion on human rights got underway at the conference some cases stood out such as that of John Bosco Kibalama who was disappeared by state agents on June 3, 2019. Kibalama was whisked away on Martyrs' Day and he is now a political martyr whose case has been discussed in Parliament for more than a month now. On October 13, Kibalama's wife, Monica Kibalama, told journalists that she has been to several police stations, CMI offices and other security agencies. She said she was shocked to see the Prime Minister Robina Nabanja narrate on television how Kibalama was being held for allegedly killing police officers last year yet he had disappeared three years ago. The other case is that of Kawemp North MP Mohamed Sigarinya who is bedridden after to an 18-month detention where he was allegedly subjected to torture. Sigarinya is currently at Nsambia Hospital receiving treatment. Sigurinya with Makindi West MP Alan Swanyana were charged alongside four others with three counts of murder and one of attempted murder allegedly committed on August 23 in Masaka District. The MPs appeared confounded by the accusations leveled against them. From September when they were detained to February this year, they were repeatedly tortured from Kitalia to Kigo Bay prisons, denied bail and endured bouts of sickness. Another case was that of Lawena who was reportedly shot by police and KCCA enforcement officers in an operation on Kampala's streets. Lawena lost seven teeth, was left with a split jaw, damaged nerves, bullet wounds and walks with difficulty. Her case has dominated Twitter discussions with the hashtag hashtag justice for Lawena. Anti-homosexuality law. The law that was passed early this year provoked marked another sharp turn in the human rights crusade in Uganda. The law prescribes arrest for landlords, hotels and anyone who according to the law, abet, homosexuality. Under the new legislation, anyone who engages in same-sex activity or identifies as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender or queer LBGTQ, could face up to 10 years of imprisonment. It also criminalizes what it calls the promotion of homosexuality and conspiring to engage in same-sex relations. In addition, a person who is convicted of grooming or trafficking children for purposes of engaging them in homosexual activities faces life in prison while individuals or institutions which support or fund LGBTQ rights activities or organizations or publish, broadcast and distribute pro-gay media material and literature, also face prosecution and imprisonment. In this regard, journalists and publishers face prosecution and imprisonment for publishing, broadcasting or distributing any content that advocates for gay rights. As a way of mitigating the damage, the Director of Public Prosecutions issued guidelines for prosecuting cases of homosexuality. Some of the NUP members who have been remanded by the General Court Martial, photo NUP. The proposed law also advocates for a death penalty for, aggravated homosexuality. This includes sexual abuse against a child a person with disability or vulnerable people or in cases where a victim of homosexual assault is infected with a lifelong illness. Property owners, too, face the risk of being jailed if their premises are used as a brothel for homosexual acts or any other sexual minorities' rights activity. Ugandans have petitioned court to have the law annulled. Leading the fight is Nicholas Opio and is joined by Fox Odoi with whom they challenged the same law in 2014. The Anti-Homosexuality Act 2023 has earned some senior Ugandan sanctions like the Speaker of Parliament Anita Among and had the World Bank suspending loans to the country. Appeals to the West. As the human rights situation in Ugandan turns futile with delayed court processes and unyielding institutions like the UHRC, some opposition actors and activists are turning to major powers like the US and EU to stop funding President Museveni's government. NUP leader and former presidential candidate Bobi Wine has consistently urged the two entities to defund the Ugandan government. This was the message from Bobi Wine when he addressed the European Parliament in Brussels, Belgium last year. 
the torture in my country does not just need EU to issue a statement but to do more, read his speech said in part. We long to see international partnerships with African states not being abettors of crime and supporting the abuse of human rights but rather standing with victim of torture and bad leaders. However Andrew Karamadi, a lawyer and human rights activist told The Independent that Western donors keep Museveni in power so appealing to them may not help matters. Uganda's development partners provide the Museveni establishment with military aid in the form of materiel, equipment training exercises, and funding. It is now beyond the pale of doubt that this support is leveraged by the regime to manage political questions. He said the donor community, particularly the United States, and other members of the industrialized West have not only a moral but legal obligation to halt their largesse to a regime that has lost its legitimacy and has demonstrated a readiness to stop at nothing in its quest for the life presidency of its leader. Only then shall we know that development partners are serious, statements of condemnations are a slap on the wrist. Karamagi said it is also critical that the West understands that they cannot safeguard their own economic and military interests in an unstable Uganda and Great Lakes region. It is also in their self-interest to ensure an open, free, and democratic society in which the rights and liberties of all citizens are upheld. Share on WhatsApp. The post Museveni human rights record backquote disgusting, appeared first on the independent Uganda. Share. Visit website.